What are you going to do with your flip-flops on a motorcycle when you fall down? Your ankle, say bye-bye, ciao, choose ankle, because it's not going to be there anymore. Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So in today's video, y'all, I'm going to be talking about culture shocks, more specifically reverse culture shocks, which basically means you come back to your home country since living in a foreign country wherever in the world. And I'm from the United States. I've been living in Germany and granted I've came, come, oh my gosh, I don't know how to speak English. I've come back to the United States many, many times and I've made many, many videos like this. If you want to check them out, I will link them up in the, not up in the description box, up in the eye. I think it's over here. Let's guess that it's over here or down in the description box. But this go around, there are some things that I've noticed that are more prevalent or maybe just more noticeable. And yeah, some are funny, some are not so funny, some are serious. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. The first and most obvious thing that I want to talk about are the public bathrooms. Y'all, so the bathrooms in the United States are disgusting. I've talked about a few bathroom differences, but never about how disgusting the bathrooms are in the United States. And this is a humongous shock for me. I knew <laughs> I was in the United States and I was no longer in Europe as soon as I used a public restroom. Granted, it was in Miami International Airport and it's not the cleanest place, but it's just disgusting. Like it is seriously a humongous culture shock for me to go into a public restroom, first and foremost, I've talked about the doors and how whimsical and flimsy they are and that you have no privacy in bathrooms but to go in there and to just have it run down you know toilet paper everywhere you have pee on the seats poop on the seats I literally went inside to a restroom you guys and sorry this might be TMI for some of y'all but they were like I don't know if someone had a dog <laughs> like seriously it looked like someone had a dog that walked on the toilet seat and poop it was just so strange and bizarre. And this was not the only bathroom that I've been in like this. I've been in bathrooms where the soap dispenser fell off <laughs> while I tried to grab the soap or I went into the bathroom and I went to grab the toilet paper and there was like something hanging from the toilet paper and I'm just like, this, this doesn't happen in Europe. Like there are some nasty bathrooms in Europe, don't get me wrong, but nothing, nothing will come close to the public restrooms in the United States and how disgusting and um, I would say low maintenance they are. But a positive culture shock that I wanted to point out, which was pretty funny because I think I was with my grandma or my mom, I don't remember who I was with, but we were somewhere and I was rushing and they asked, why are you rushing Haley? And I'm like, cause we have to go so I can use the restroom and they're like, go to the restroom in the back of the store. And I was thinking to myself, oh, we're, <laughs> we're not in Germany. We can pee anywhere. So granted, I don't like using public restrooms and I find them to be, how do you say, abysmal, I think would be the word, but <laughs> they are available to anyone. And I'm a person that I have to tinkle a lot, so. And they don't cost 50 cents, so mm, double. <laughs> The next culture shock, you guys, is going to be how loud people are in public spaces. I have never come into contact, I feel like, with so many people listening to music without headphones, watching movies without headphones, and five years of living in Germany than I did in the first week of being back in the United States. But it is just so mind-boggling to me that you could be sitting somewhere, let's say in a restaurant, and someone will literally have their cell phone on the highest volume having a FaceTime call or listening to music while you're in a public area. And some people sometimes say something, but at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do about it. But I just think it's like common courtesy and etiquette to not do those things. My mom and I, we went to eat with my little brother for lunch one day, and this man literally brought his church service live stream on full speaker. He was sitting behind us listening to it. And the funny thing is, it's not just Americans, it's everyone. I went to Starbucks the other day and it was so funny because there was a German guy, you guys. I live in mini Germany, I say this all the time, but he came in loud as heck, yelling on FaceTime. <laughs> Das 
And I'm just sitting there with my headphones, my noise canceling headphones in, and I just heard like a noise, like a loud noise. So I went to take off my headphones because I was like, maybe someone's about to shoot us up and Starbucks and I gotta make a run for it, you guys. And it was just a German guy showing a house on FaceTime to these people that wanted to purchase the home and they were living in Germany. At least for him though, he got the message when I just like stared at him that, okay, maybe I'm being a little obnoxious, maybe I'm being a little loud, and he went outside. I mean, so that's like the positive thing, that's how Germans are, but Americans are not like that. You could stare at them and they'll just like make it louder or they'll just stare at you back or they'll like, do you wanna watch it too? And it's like, no, I want you to shut the hell up. Moving on to a positive reverse culture shock is going to be that I understand everyone effortlessly, you guys. I do think my German is like decent, you guys. I think I understand a lot, I speak a lot, I have a very, how do you say, enriching German experience and language experience in my day-to-day -day life in Deutschland. But there are some things that I just don't pick up or maybe I miss or maybe they get lost in translation in my head, la di da And it's just so nice to be in a country where everyone speaks your mother tongue and they just get you and you get them. I have difficulty speaking English sometimes, which is a reverse culture shock for me as well. But when I was going through the customs line, the man was speaking to me relatively quickly. And I just thought to myself, like a little light bulb went into my head. Like I didn't even have to string myself on to hear what he had to say. It just went through my brain and I processed it. And this happens in Germany as well with German, I would say 80% of the time. But for it to happen 100% of the time like it does in the United States is something that is so crazy for me when I come back. And it takes me a while um, to get readjusted and to get acclimated to <laughs> what's happening around me. I'm like, oh my gosh. The next culture shock is going to be the semi-trucks in the left lane. This is something that is very scary for me actually while driving in the United States. This is something that I really dislike since living in Germany, that trucks in the United States ride in the left lane. It just messes up the whole flow of traffic and it's allowed. I mean, I don't know if it's allowed, but everyone does it. There's like no one bats an eye, no one gets pulled over. It is what it is, especially in Florida. People just drive how they want to drive. And I feel like for me, semis in general and how reckless they are, regardless if it's their fault or not, it's still really crazy for me to see, let's say, an 18-wheeler driving so recklessly like every single day. In Germany, you don't come into contact with that. But seeing on the vehicle slash road point, you guys, another reverse culture shock for me are the motorcycles and how dumb they drive here. Not everyone. It's not like, I wouldn't say the majority, it's maybe like a 50-50 split, but people on motorcycles or motorcycle drivers here are so careless with their lives. I know that people do drive a little crazy and that people do, you know, lose their lives in Germany while riding a motorcycle as well, but I've just seen so many people making dumb decisions here in the United States when riding a bike. And also that they wear no protective gear. There are people that don't wear helmets, that don't wear specific shoes, because what are you gonna do with your flip-flops on a motorcycle when you fall down? Your ankle, say bye-bye, ciao, choose ankle, because it's not gonna be there anymore. That's something that is so crazy for me to see, that you just see people driving, weaving in and out of traffic, going really fast um, or driving in between cars. This happens a lot in the United States. This has never happened to me in Germany before, you know, aside if there was traffic and people were just driving through. But in the United States, I've just been driving down the interstate and a motorcycle didn't want to pass, you know, a specific way. So they just drove in between the two cars. And I was like, this is not okay. This is not safe. Like I said, it's not every motorcycle driver because there are people that take it very serious and they are very safe and they're very educated. But there are a lot of people in the United States that get motorcycles that I guess just don't know or just don't care. So the last and final point you guys is probably going to be the biggest culture shock for me since being back in the United States, since being back in Florida, and it is the men. So I have just become, first and foremost, because I'm in a relationship, you guys, and so I don't pay attention to men that much, and usually when I'm doing something, I'm with Mike, and I'm not doing that much alone in Germany, if that makes sense. Like, I do a few things alone in Germany, and when I do do things alone, guys don't bother 
bother me. They're not coming up to me. They're not talking to me randomly. They're not trying to buy me drinks. They're not trying to compliment me. Like it doesn't happen that easily. But in the United States, y'all, I feel like I'm in a different planet. Like I honestly feel. <laughs> Like I am in a zoo and that men are constantly watching me and sometimes it's meant in a very nice way But there are some times where it feels you know on the border of too much and maybe even vulgar or maybe even Inappropriate maybe would be the word but for me. It sort of feels like a cat and mouse game I mean not for me because I am not playing this game and I'm not involved but maybe for men that come up and speak to me or want to um, try to get my attention or try to, I have no idea, start a conversation with me. Maybe that's their way of like playing this cat and mouse game. But I think that since I'm reserved and since I'm not really interested and maybe I give off that I'm not interested that that makes people or maybe men in general want me more. I don't know what the issue is, but it's just like when I go out here, I, I will be standing by myself, minding my own business, not making eye contact with anyone, not speaking to anyone, and there will be a man coming up. Do you want me to pay for your gas? Some man the other day tried to pay for my gas, you guys, and I was like, it's okay. No, thank you. I went to the ice cream store with my grandma the other day, and these two older gentlemen purchased our ice cream there. I went to a bar the other day. I didn't even talk to this man, didn't even know this man existed, didn't even see them. The bartender brought me another drink and said the man over there bought you a drink and I'm looking like maybe I knew him I don't I never saw this man never made eye contact with this man never spoke to this man nothing and I was just like do I know him and the guy's like I, I don't know I thought you knew him I, I, I have never met this man a day in my life he could have passed me by the street and I wouldn't even know who he was and I remember in some of my older videos I used to talk about how German guys used to not like pursue you or pay for your items and so I do think that it was like this before but since I've been living in Germany for such a long time and since I've been in a relationship for such a long time that it's maybe even more so magnified now. So maybe this was always something that existed but because of everything that's happened in between and how much time has been uh, spent somewhere else, I'm just now noticing it again for the first time. And it's just a huge culture shock for me because it puts me in an awkward situation most of the time. Because American Haley, you know, pre-Germany Haley, maybe that's the way I should say it, pre-Germany Haley would be perfectly fine with any of these things happening, with a guy paying for my stuff. In a relationship, out of a relationship, does not matter. But now, not even, you know, I respect Mike, that's like the number one thing, but because I've seen how it works across the pond, I, I don't like it. It's not that I don't like it, I, I'm very thankful that people are generous, maybe I think would be the word, but like I said, it puts me in an awkward position. It puts me in an awkward situation between the person on the giving in and me on the receiving in. And yeah, I don't know what else to say about that, you guys. It's just something that I've been having to manage. <laughs> and weave and navigate through here because it's been happening a lot more frequently than I would like it to. And just like guys in general being very, how do you say, open about like wanting to speak to you, wanting to talk to you, wanting to get your number, wanting to have a conversation with you. And in Germany, I'm usually very like, uh, how do you say safe in the sense that I know nine times out of 10, a random man is not gonna come up to me and start a random conversation with me or ask me for my number. And that's something that I have grown to love. <laughs> I used to dislike it and hate it in the beginning, but now, now that I know how it is or now that I have experienced it without it or with it, y'all, I don't want it. I don't want the, no, leave me alone. Those are all of my culture shocks for now, you guys. I might make another one of these videos because I have a few more written down, but I know this video will be extremely long. Other than that, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If there are any other reverse culture shocks that you've ever experienced that I did not talk about in this video, you can leave them in the comment section. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day and bye.